Hello everyone, the topic uh, we cover today is delirium. So delirium is an acute organic psychiatric disorder we can say. So why we say it is an organic disorder, it is having a definite organic etiology or pathology. That is why we are saying it is an organic disorder. And the word delirium which is derived from a Latin word delirare that means to, uh, to become crazy. Okay. So, here you can see that the patient will be having uh, some increased psychomotor activity, disturbance with the disorientation, etc. So, we will see detail regarding the delirium. So, the delirium, it is otherwise called as acute organic disorder or acute brain syndrome or toxic psychosis. And in psychiatry, ICD classification chapter F05, it is describing regarding delirium. And now we will see the definition of delirium. So, we can say delirium, it is a reversible cognitive impairment in uh, global impairment in uh, cognitive function and which alter the consciousness of the patient. So, here you can see that it is reversible. That means the patient may come back to a normal state and there is a disturbance with the cognitive function. The patient's cognitive functions of brain may be altered here and it can affect with the consciousness of the patient also. Now, we will see the epidemiology. So, while coming to the epidemiology, the general population 0.4 percentage of uh, people may uh, affect with the delirium and 5 to 10 percentage of medical surgical patients may be uh, developing delirium and 9 to 30 percentage of admission, the total admission in the clinical setting from that 9 to 30 percentage may develop with the delirium. And if it is a burns patient, severely burned patient approximately 20 percentage may develop with the delirium. And the delirium is very common with the clinical setup. And now we will move to the uh, clean, uh, etiological factors or causes of delirium and the causes we can abbreviate as vindictive mad. So, V stands for the vascular, the vascular causes, the problem with the cardiovascular issues, maybe any cardiac problem or uh, there is any problem with the brain like a stroke, cerebrovascular accident, etc. Then the I stands for infection, any infections of the brain, it may be meningitis or encephalitis. Then N stands for the neoplasm, in brain tumors, that comes the neoplasm. Then the D, which stands for the degenerative causes of brain, especially the Alzheimer's dementia or dementia of Pick's disease. Then it comes again I, intoxication. So that means uh, the chronic alcoholic patient or intoxication of certain psychiatric drugs. Then it comes the I, C, C stands for the congenital. So in the congenital, the by birth itself, the child may be having certain diseases. The one ex best example will be the epilepsy. So such type of patient, the delirium is very common. Then T, the T stands for trauma, especially the head trauma or head injury. Then the intraventricular causes. So the hydrocephalus is the best example for the intraventricular causes. Then the V. V stands for vitamin deficiency, especially vitamin B1 and B12 deficiency that can cause with the brain abnormality and it can lead to the delirium. Then E, E stands for endocrine and metabolic disorder. The endocrine disorders like uh, any problem with the thy thyroid gland, parathyroid gland, then metabolic disorders like diabetes mellitus or any hepatic issues can lead to the delirium. Then it comes to M, M stands for metallic ingestion of heavy metals like lead poisoning etc can lead to the uh, del uh, delirium. So that is the M. Then A, A stands for anoxia means reduced oxygen supply to the brain, hypoxia everything can lead to the uh, delirium. And D which stands for depression, in the depressive patient delirium may be very common. So these are the Etiolo various etiological factor in a short form we can say it is a vindictive mad that leads to the uh, delirium and come to the clinical features. So while coming to the clinical features, the main clinical features will be clouding of consciousness and disorientation. The clouding of consciousness is nothing but a reduced consciousness and the patient may become drowsy 
and another one disorientation the person may, may not be oriented to the time place and person he may be he cannot identify properly but maybe the time now where he is and the persons he cannot be identified apart from this one the patient may be having problem with inability to sustain attention proper attention may not be there easily he may be distractible and he may be developing with the hallucinatory feature and delusion features in the hallucination both auditory hallucination and visual hallucination both may be developing to the patient and the delusion in the delusion usually the persecutory delusion in the persecutory delusion the person may be feeling that oh someone is trying to harm me then there is a diurnal variation diurnal variation in the sense the sleep wake cycle of the patient may be disturbed and usually these symptoms may be worsen at the evening time or night time so we can say it's a sundowning syndrome means in the delirium all the signs and symptoms usually it may uh, very it may become worse during evening or night time so we say sundowning syndrome and apart from this one there may be a problem with the speech disturbances and thought disturbances these are the main uh, clinical features of delirium now we'll move to the diagnostic evaluation so while coming to the diagnostic evaluation it is very important because uh, the delirium we are considering as a medical emergency so immediately we have to go for this one otherwise uh, it may be uh, it can affect the brain and severe complications will be there so usually in the clinical setup itself they'll go for this one and if necessary we can get help from the psychiatrist so while coming to the diagnostic evaluation it may be the detailed medical and psychiatric history mental status examination neurological examination we can go for to find out any uh, abnormalities of brain functioning then we can go for all the investigation all the investigation in the sense all the blood examination urine examination serum electrolytes ecg then apart from this one uh, eeg ct mri all the investigation can be done to find out or rule out what may be the causes of delirium now we'll move to the management how we can manage the delirium so while coming to the management so usually already i told it is uh, uh, in the clinical setup itself uh, it will be managed so we'll see according to the patient's causes or symptomatic management will be done suppose if the patient is having hypoxia so we have to go for ensure 100 percentage of oxygen that means oxygen administration should be done if it is due to hypoglycemia so we have to go for 50 percent of dextrose should be administered to the patient then benzodiazepines will be administering then if it is due to vitamin deficiency so we can go for vitamin supplement okay along with the iv fluid vitamin supplement should be administered to the patient then if it is head injury so such type of management will give if there is a hallucination or delusion we may administer antipsychotic drugs to the patient and then apart from this one the environmental modification should be there so in the environmental modification so try to give uh, try to minimize the uh, staff means minimum staff should be giving care to the patient that means the same person okay similar person should take care of the patient if frequently if the staffs are changing the patient already having a persecutory delusion patient will be thinking that oh, someone is trying to harm me so frequently if the staffs are changing the patient's uh, persecutory belief will increase so to reduce that one the minimum staff similar staff can take care of the patient if necessary we can include the family members for taking care of the patient and the environmental stimuli should be reduced like in noises and ensure uh, proper lighting in that particular room then the calendars we have to frequently change the date everything otherwise the patient already having a disorientation so the patient doesn't know the date time everything so that uh, timing the clock will be there the clock timing should be adjusted and that calendar should be uh, frequently changed then uh, go for proper vital signing of the patient and monitor all the vital sign and give a symptomatic treatment to the patient and usually after the discharge the patient may come back to a normal state that's why we say it is a reversible uh, disease condition okay so that is regarding the uh, delirium so we have seen what is delirium etiology uh, clinical features everything so that's all for today's class this is vishan signing off till we meet the next class